Hi all, Mass Barncup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we're going to talk about the next gen DR SSTC driver, also known as the Universal Driver 3, which is original a work of Steve Wards. The codebase and PCB design was further worked on by Jens Karenas, also known as Nets Fusher on the highvoltageforum.net. Later revisions and so on have also been made by other members and I have here in my hand the uh, latest revision UD 3.1b I think it is. This is made by Thorben Sethoff known as Tmax Electronics. He uh, put up a group buy on these and had them made and uh, well I opted in for one so let's check it out and uh, let's see where that leads us on the big Tesla coil. Let the unboxing begin. But first, of course, we need some coffee. Coffee goes very well with unboxing electronics. And as this is a PSOC based, not uh, exactly a cheap Tesla coil driver, I'll uh, wear my wrist strap. That is good coffee. It's the UD3.1B pre-order kit with Molex connectors and Fibernet add-on kit. And of course the large components have not been soldered in, as well as some of the, or all of the connectors. Some more components, the Fiberland extension board here, PCB with more holes than Swiss cheese from tmaxelectronics.de. Seems he uh, added quite a lot of uh, memes on here, we have a data PP. And on the other side we have a uh, Mimi storage that <laughs> might contain RF Hoodoo. Yeah, okay, so he added a lot of jokes and text on the, onto this. Away that box goes. So let's just put that one over here and check out the driver board itself. That does look extremely empty if you look at the wrong side. Check out the SMD component side here. That is a lot of components and up here we have much tight so rooted such layout i guess i'll just need to solder in all the large components let's take a look at the features of the ud3 it has a embedded interrupter with midi and sid audio modulation it can do frequency sweeps of the primary resonator it can do primary peak current measurements over CT. It can do pulse skipping. There's an alarm and event system for fault tracing. It has system fault interlocks for under voltage, temperature and watchdogs. It has a DC bus current measurement and also DC bus voltage measurements. It can control up to four relays to handle uh, soft start and inrush current. You can control external light displays for some of the status LEDs. It's running on free RTOS, which is a real-time operating system. You can control it via a command line over serial interface. And it has support for Tesla Therm and UD3 node and can deliver live telemetry over serial bus. Now, when we get over to the version here, which is made by Tmax Electronics, he has upgraded with a few other options and most notably the FiberNet option sitting here, which is a yeah, optical fiber isolating web server interface to the serial interface of the UD3. So if we bring up the connection list, uh, we can see that we up here have our 24 volt DC input. We have fan connections, relay connections, we have our USB programming port. Over here we have status LEDs and we have DC bus voltage and current measurements. We have thermistor inputs and we have CT input for current or zero current detection. And we have our GDT2 outputs over here. Now he also added some um, yeah, quality uh, improvements to some of the inputs outputs and added some more protection. And he also added a V drive regulator. So you can actually do something between 10 to 24 volt DC on the drive voltage to the GDTs. And he uh, re 
configured the whole design or updated the whole design so this can be made with JLC's assembly services. So the only thing you need to do by hand is soldering in the piece arc. For the iBoss current conversion, uh, I think I discovered a small error in the original design, which is that it uses a industry standard 300 amp Hall effect current transformer. Uh, the original one is an LEM. Well, I'm using a Honeywell CSNS 300, has the exact same specs. When supplied with plus minus 12 volt, this delivers 300 amp into 33 ohm or shunt resistor. There was a 50 ohm put in here and that corresponds to using plus minus 15 volts on these standard sensors. So I'm changing that to 33 ohm and that is only in the case that you get over 200 amps on your DC bus that it can develop over 5 volt on the input and you risk destroying your input pins on the PSOC. To connect to the fiber interface, I'm using a media converter, just an old one I had lying around, from 1000 base to dual fiber here. And that is, of course, a different fiber interface than what we have here. And for that, I had to order a LC to ST duplex cable. But uh, with all this in place, we should actually be able to hook this up directly to the network of a PC and we should see this show up as an IP address running DHCP and the built-in web server will be accessible with the software. And I think that's Tesla term, but let's jump right into the software part. Now that everything is put together, I have mounted the temperature sensors and not much else. We can do the initial testing from the documentation. Now it says that we uh, need a current limited power supply, 100 milliamp at 24 volt DC, and nothing should get warm. So let's just turn on the power supply. So right now we should see some weird behavior as voltage is way too low. It seems that the startup current of this uh, version of the UD3 uses quite a lot more power than described in the initial testing. So my power supply adjusted for 100 milliamp current limiting is simply way too low. Let's uh, check out the metering when turning it on. It goes into current limiting mode at 100 milliamps. But what's what happens when I turn up the current adjustment? Rises up to 200 milliamps, 250 milliamps before settling down to 100 milliamp, 80, 100 milliamp. That gives us a driver in a running state. A lot of status LEDs all around the board. So we can see that the plus minus 12 volt, the 24 volt DC and V drive, 5 volt is present. And then we have the status LEDs. Uh, we have the fault light, which is, which is FLT. And then we have communication blinking. So step two is connect the computer to uh, the driver via a USB cable. So let's try that. Plugging in the USB cable, the driver presents itself as COM4 and we connect via serial 9000 baud rate. Oh, and there we have it. Next thing I want to test is the FiberNet extension board over here. And to do that, I bought some different stuff and I got a fiber optic patch cable here, which is suitable for the connectors we have on the FiberNet board, but also on this black box media converter that I had lying around. So um, great to use some uh, parts that I have saved for times like these. It is of course important to get the RX and TX swapped so you do not yeah, put two TX and two RX lines together. Now it's time to set up the FiberNet connection. We have the red LED showing that there is no current connection between the UD3 and the FiberNet expansion board. So we want to change that by setting the min enable command. Set min enable one. We'll do a EEPROM save. We have now saved it and uh, then we should be able to reboot it. 
Not sure if we can actually do that from here. Ah, that changed things for the better. Now we have 500 flashing green, which means it actually tries to connect to a network, but as this is uh, currently um, yeah, not connected to anything, that's not happening. Let's get back to the GitHub page and check out a Tesla term, which is a Tesla terminal developed by Malder, uh, which will work fine together with the Fibernet option. And over here, I downloaded the latest release, 3.10. So let's just check uh, that out. And I just got the Tesla term uh, win.zip and unpackage that one. We get all this content and we have Tesla term.exe. So let's run that. With these kind of amateur made softwares, the manual isn't always that precise. So we are connecting over UDP. And uh, this is where I got a little lost at first because I was I was looking at my router to find the uh, IP address that the UD3 was getting over the Fibernet. And it can only, only be found with a port 21 open for its FTP, which is used for updating its firmware. But uh, what I didn't know was that if you just start typing the remote IP address here, it's actually scanning the network and it already knows that, yeah, it's available at this IP address. And then we just connect and there we go. Here we have it. We are actually inside. So uh, let's uh, start up the data logging. And we should now see the red line here, our ambient temperature being measured. I placed the temperature probe just over the SFP fiber connection. As we can see, the temperature rises up steadily. We have four degrees Celsius divisions here in the trend. And it's rising up from some 22 degrees to, yeah, let's see what how that ends up at. Now, I got nothing else connected, so hence we have no other measurements. But uh, here we have the terminal that we can recognize from the connection with Paddy. And other than that, we can actually send some commands up here. We can do some MIDI file, some scripting. Uh, none of this I got any idea how that works. But uh, we can also do some uh, resets and kills. So we can also choose a MIDI input over here. And of course there is the normal interrupter settings. With just with sliders here. So yeah, I think this concludes this video. Which is about soldering the driver, getting it started, connecting with a serial interface and getting Tesla term connected over network interface. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you want to invest into an UD3 and yeah, explore this together with all the great people who have helped make this project, which is Steve Ward with the original UD3 code, Nets Fusher who have built this uh, UD3 driver. Then we have uh, Tmax Electronics, Thorben who did the Fibernet interface, and we have Malde who did the Tesla term interface here. So uh, really a lot of um, people coming together and doing a large software project together with associated hardware. It's really great to see and really came out nicely here years after they started. So it's a huge work that they are sharing with everybody for free. So really worth checking out. So until next time, see ya.